Here we'll be going over the loading and operation of the Hasselblad 500C camera. We're fortunate enough to have two of these in our equipment checkout case. These cameras are a bit difficult to load. For our purposes, we'll keep the removable film magazine in place at all times. To open it up, there's a key on the back. You flip up this, turn it counterclockwise, and then you can pull out the center part of the magazine. Take the film out of the box, out of the foil. Always remove the inner band completely because sometimes it ends up hung up on your roll. Next, we put the film in place here. Uh, note that the film is coming off the back of this, not over the top like it would in a Holga camera. So um, that's probably the biggest mistake that's, that's made with these. You want to make sure the paper leader goes underneath this metal tab here. To loosen that up, you need to turn the lock again and then pull it around and leave it unlocked because otherwise the paper kind of hangs up on there. Here we're feeding the um, leader, tab leader into the take up spool and turning the knurled knob here to move that ahead and this only turns one way and again we're on the back side here so you want to get that started at least one turn and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn this knurled knob again until that double arrow thing lines up with the red arrow here and then we're ready to insert the insert back into the magazine and we'll have to turn this tight again push it into place turn it and lock it next we'll be turning this crank on the side and advancing it until it stops and then we'll see the number one show up on the film counter here so we just turn this several turns there's our number one and it stops. Now we put this crank away until we've shot our 12 exposures. So after we shoot our first exposure we'll be advancing with the large knob here and then when we get to when, after we shoot number 12 we use this crank again to wind things through. So you want to make sure you don't turn that crank any time during the 12 exposures. The main controls for this camera are all visible from the top, the back ring is for the focus. Your focus is in feet here. Your aperture and shutter speed are actually linked, which can be a little tricky. So if I want to, so, so here it's locked at f22 at a 60th. If I want f56 at a 60th, I have to push down on um, this ring right here, and then this will move independently. I can move this to 5.6. So that's a little tricky. The idea of that is so you can bracket your depth of field. So maybe I want to shoot one shot at f5.6 of the 60th. Maybe I want less depth of field on a version. Um, so I'll set it at f2.8. And notice that you know the exposure stays locked. Maybe I'll see if I can brace the camera and shoot it all the way at f22 at a quarter. So all those would be equivalent exposures and give you very different pictures because of the different depths of field. Which you can actually see um, on these red uh, indicators on the right above what the focus feet. So if you're at f22 focused at about 12 feet Everything from 7 feet to 35 feet will be in focus. If you go all the way back to F2.8, 
uh, you only have everything from about 10 to 13 feet uh, in focus. So once again, to change the aperture independent of the shutter speed, push down right here as you turn. Trolls on this camera, there's an EV exposure scale that corresponds to the accessory light meter that fits onto the knob of this camera that um, is only so effective, not as good as an app on your phone. Um, on this side, this is shutter sync, and if you're shooting with flash, it's very important that this is on X sync, and to change that, you push up on this and move it over. The M is for flash bulbs. The V setting is for a self timer and I would not recommend using that because it usually makes the shutter hang up and it's real easy to jam the camera using the V uh, self-portrait setting. There's a PC outlet for the electronic flash and that's right above where the um, synchronization is and then on the bottom of the camera is the shutter release which is set up for a right-handed person. Opposite that is the um, lens release if you need to change lens lenses. I do have a longer and a wide angle lens for Hasselblad in my office. The shutter release button does have a lock so you want to make sure that's on O if you can't push in the shutter button might be because that got turned down. It's a very small little lever. The designers of this camera probably intended it to be on a tripod, but it works fairly well handheld. So to open up the focusing hood, there's a button here that we push to the right, and then the whole thing should pop out. There's a magnifier in the viewfinder that um, you release by pushing this button to the side and that can help aid in focusing, but it doesn't always show you the whole frame, so you may want to focus with the magnifier up and then push it back into place when you're actually composing. Here I have the camera all focused and composed. Push the shutter button, it makes a lot of noise, and one thing you'll notice after you push the shutter button is the view in the viewfinder disappears. And a lot of times that freaks people out, like something broke on the camera, but that's just how it is. As you turn the advanced knob, the mirror will come down and you'll be able to see through the lens again. To close the focusing hood, you just push the sides in, then the back, and then the front, and then it clicks shut. So here we compose, focus with the magnifier. Push the magnifier down, recompose, get our shadow of our head out of the picture, and then squeeze the shutter button and advance. So here I have just shot my 12th exposure. I'm going to turn the advance knob to get the mirror back down again so we're ready to start our next roll. And then I'm going to turn this crank again until I can hear the film come off of there and there's a lot less tension on it and then we're ready to remove the film. Go over to this key again, lift it up, turn it, pull out the film insert and there's our exposed roll of film. So you, on this film you have to actually lick the band that holds the roll shut. You want to bring your spool back to the take up position so you're ready for your next roll of film. Make sure that pops into place. Reinsert the magazine into the camera. Make sure it's in there solidly all the way in and you're ready to turn the lock. And there you are. The Hasselblad's a very precise camera. Um, really the number one drawback is the difficulty in loading it, but the um, reason for that is by having the reverse bend on the film, the you can keep the film more perfectly flat for better focus.
and sit for our house support. 